interrupt me all the time and uh, ask, ask your own questions and get me to digress and pull me into areas. And if we do it like that, it'll be fun. Okay. The problem was I would like to see how you guys could see the, the mapping of the two frames in the activation context. Right, the, 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 the third blog. Right, the, the first blog post. Yeah, we can we can go over that. And uh, then another thing is how the VM organizes generating code. It's got a little assembler in it and it has to fix up jumps and stuff like this so that you can actually generate machine code. And then another thing that's interesting is the inline caching. And I can do that this afternoon, I think. I think that's enough. We might not finish all of it this afternoon. And then tomorrow there's stuff like, um, there's a more sophisticated code generator. And so comparing a naive code generator with a code generator that does some mapping of the stack to registers is interesting and in seeing how that works. There's um, the FFI and there's two things in the FFI. One is how you can um, implement an FFI with minimal assembler where you use stack allocation to marshal arguments and um, that's a kind of convenient way of going about producing an FFI. And then I can try and um, show you, can't show you so much, but I have some, some slides that I can show you on um, how to extend the FFI and the VM to make uh, the FFI threaded. So you can have multiple threads owning the VM, but only one can own the VM at any time. But that means that you can call out on any thread and you can call back on any thread. And you know, um, and then right. I mean, that's that, and that's that's very closely related. And so callbacks, we would do callbacks in the in the FFI, and. Um, then I, um, as part of that, I can talk to um, what a new garbage collector would look like. And um, it would be great to um, get people to actually start doing that and to do work with the whole hazelnuts uh, to move the work in that direction towards a, a better garbage collector and a better object model. Um, and other things might come up, but if if we can, you know, spend effectively two days doing doing that, does that make sense? So, thought we'd try and do that. But now it's lunch time, right? <laughs> so basically, we have one hour. <laughs> I hear that the lunch is good here, so we we better move. <laughs> we we better get on with it then. No, but you see, just from the practical point of view. They are served on table and normally the university they are served on the two, you know, the two and you grab the first because the last day to arrive at one day. Because I guess they can serve us and we will serve to we have the meeting that we should leave at <coughs> twelve plus fourteen, something like that. Okay. So in that case. Clean some crap up. Oh, hang on.
C'est allumé Il est allumé So the room doesn't use, does not hear you via that. This is just for the recording. So okay. that, that if you don't right. talk here, the room doesn't really hear you well. But that this is for the yeah, yeah. Can people hear me if I, if I speak like this? Or do I need to speak like this? Come on. If I speak like this, is that okay? All right. So you prefer with a microphone. Here's this microphone on. So the um, whole point of um, a JIT for small talk, the most important point is to enable um, inline caching. So what's, um, what's an inline cache? And uh, I'm going to get back to context to stack mapping, but I just want to give you some idea of what the uh, inline caching uh, thing is so that it makes uh, sense. Um, I could try. Can we try and, yeah, I need, I need to, I tell you what, I'll, I'll do something else. Um, let me, uh, let me do this. this down I need this where's full screen appearance full screen oh, I hate this um no no the, uh, yes right I maximize the whole window but then and now I can I can but I have to close all my workspaces right all my workspaces so I have to do things like this um, and get rid of that workspace and open it up new and then everything's really small and so now we can start to read right yeah okay so um, <coughs> Okay, so what we're trying to do now is to uh, understand the um, context to stack mapping that occurs in the VM. So who doesn't understand contexts in Smalltalk? So if I, um, if I do a self-halt, we've got this stack trace. So this stack trace is nothing more than a chain of objects. So if I inspect this thing, which is called this context, and I explore it, it's an object that has uh, some fields, and actually has some uh, indexable fields here too, but it has a sender and it has a program counter and it has a stack pointer and it has a method and it may have a closure or nil and it has a receiver and it may have some stack state. So that state is the state you need to define a method, uh, an execution of a method. Right? So which, which, uh, which bytecode are you uh, executing uh, at the particular time is the PC and uh, what temporary variables you have on the on the stack is determined by the by the stack pointer 
so, uh, and uh, where where the message that activated this activation record came from is the sender. So I can go down here and, and, and when I inspect the sender field, I have another thing in here, which is another context. And it too has a sender and now it has a, its own program counter. And if I keep on going down, uh, One, one frame, one frame, and, and, uh, and it's linked through the sender field, right? So, so undefined object halt, its sender is undefined object do it, and its sender is compiler evaluate in two. So if we have a look at, at evaluate in two in the, in the debugger, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of arguments, and it's got a lot of temporary variables, and... Um, as we execute, it's got some uh, temporary expressions, right? Some intermediate results uh, that are being evaluated uh, and and stored temporarily on a stack in a, just a standard stack organization. So if I if I go back to the inspector, and um, this guy, this thing here, let me uh, inspect it. is that activation record. So this is compiler evaluate into etc. and here it is. And um, it's easier to see in the Explorer, but okay, it's got a sender field, it's got a, a program counter which is a position in that, that big method. Uh, and you know, I can explore the, the method and the method has literals and bytecodes and so we're at position 142 in it, um, which is uh, the sending of with args execute method, which is how you evaluate the, the do it. So that's exactly where you would expect it to be. Right? We're at the point in this in this method uh, where where execution has uh, has been uh, suspended is the point where it has um, it's compiled some text a do it text. The, uh, the self halt into a method and it's evaluating that method. And here's the method that it's evaluating. It's just self halt. And then we invoke the error behavior that pops up the debugger. So this, uh, this stack frame here is actually an object. And um, the object is well well defined it has six uh, named instance variables uh, there's the receiver of the method there's um, the closure if this is a block activation there's the byte coded method uh, which is half literals and half byte codes there's a stack pointer into some indexable fields so this thing is is half named instance variables and and, and half some number of, of uh, indexed instance variables. And uh, so this is the, the, the stack uh, of uh, containing arguments and temporary variables and intermediate results for just this activation. And then the entire stack of a, of a process is a linked list of these individual things. So this is lovely. Um, and we can have a look at the um, the class in the uh, in the browser, and um, there's a, a super class which we don't need. This is all uh, anachronism to do with the way that blocks used to be implemented, which was which was wrong. But luckily, we, we've, we've got closures now, and it's all much neater. So I have an instruction stream, and an instruction stream is really a method in a PC. It's, it's streaming over a, a method, and, and for historical reasons, um, this is a, a, an awful hack. They decided that the, the, the sender link, the pointer to the, the caller context, should be the first thing. 
So there's a horrible hack in here, which, which is that when you try and use an instruction stream as just an instruction stream, sender actually holds onto the method. And when you use instruction stream as a, a context, as, a, as, a, as an actual execution thing, sender is sender. Um, so if you, if you find, I think, uh, if we find uh, find method, uh, method, right, this says return sender. Okay, so it's a horrible, horrible hack. And, and why it was like this, it's just, this goes back to, to Xerox Park and some horrible pragmatism, but never mind. So an instruction stream is really a, a pair of a PC and a method. Um, and then uh, beneath that uh, is um, a context which needs uh, a stack pointer and some, uh, some local stack. And then if you're activating a method, you, you need, uh, rather than a block, you need the method. And, but all of that is, is, uh, is nonsense. What you should have now is just context. And context would have those six fields. Maybe you'd split it into instruction stream where you'd have method and PC and context, which would add, add the additional state of the receiver and the, and the stack. The way to think about it is that there's just this, uh, this method, uh, uh, this uh, activation object, which is able to have some local stack with a stack pointer into it. And then the receiver of the method and where we came from, which is the sender and the PC and the method. Uh, tracking the, the, the byte codes. And so we can uh, execute um, instructions. Um, and if I go up in instruction uh, stream, here's the basic um, interpreter in the, in the system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Here, here, I've got it. I've got it. Right. So, so here's here's the here's the main uh, decode in the in the system for 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 bytecodes. So it says interpret next instruction for a client, and it grabs whatever the method is, and uh, grabs the the byte from the from the PC, and it breaks it into two nibbles, and then it uh, dispatches on it. And so, you know, the first bytecode from 0 to 16 is push receiver variable that pushes an instance variable of the receiver. And then the next one is push a temporary, uh, uh, which is either an argument or, or a local variable, depending on, on how many arguments, because the arguments and, and, and uh, local variables just uh, run into each other. They all share the, the same stack. And then there's uh, pushing uh, literals, which are um, uh, the, the object literals referred to by the, the method. And uh, then there's pushing uh, literal variables. So um, let's have a look at, at some implementations of these. So if we have a look at it at, at, so at push literal variable. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But it, it, this is this is more generic, and let let me show you why it's more generic. So, here's um, here's the one that the that if you were to step in the debugger would actually get used if you did uh, you know push literal variable, which is when you dereference a a global. So we 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 say self push um, grab the um, Grab the value index of some of some literal, so you know. Uh, uh, here's um, a pair of a key and a value, point and the class point, which is an association in in Smalltalk. And so that's that's how globals are represented in the in the current system. So to uh, you know when you mention point in code, the method holds on to the association, the pair, and uh, 
when you assign to it or you uh, mention it when you fetch its value, what you're doing is either assigning to or um, fetching from uh, value index, the, the, the value slot in, in, in that pair, in that association. So uh, in, uh, in execution terms, how you push a literal variable is you push the uh, value index of a pair. But if you are printing, you don't do that at all. If you're printing, you write push lit and whatever the key is, right? And if you're decompiling, then you construct a little piece of parse tree saying, oh, this is a global variable, and you push it on some stack for later processing. So that interpret loop in the system is much more than it is in the VM. In the VM, the interpret loop only executes bytecode. Here, this is part of a lovely framework where we can print, we can decompile, we can simulate execution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So this is a beautifully object-oriented scheme, and that's why it's split into instruction stream and its subclasses. Right? It's because there are all of these subclasses doing all of these, these cool things. <coughs> So what kind of cool things do we do? Well, you know, being able to print and, and all of that is, is, is fine. But the really cool thing that we can do is because we can reify uh, an execution, uh, an activation record, we can do all sorts of things like coroutines. So if I, if I, if I have two contexts and I, I wish to, to uh, keep them going at the same time, I can just swap senders. Right. This, this is just a, a, a linked list of activation records, and, and, and I can just change the sender to, to, to return to some, somewhere else. And so you can do coroutining. Um, you can uh, search for a sender, right? So you know, if I'm uh, if I'm in a, a workspace, right? Um, this context. Let, let me let me do a little search. Ctxt. CTXT becomes equal to this context. Uh, CTXT method selector begins with uh, EV while false. CTXT becomes equal to, sorry? Yeah, what, what? Extreme pair programming. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, no, 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 no. Look, what, what happens when I do this? Ah. I mean, I, <laughs> come on. So, what did, I, what did I do? I started off with this context, and I, and I kept on asking this guy for its sender until I found one whose, whose, whose selector began with, 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 with EV, and I got back to my evaluate, right? So, the exception system is implemented completely above the VM by sending messages to contexts. There's one little part of the exception system. Which part of the exception system is implemented in the VM? I read about Socrates. No, you know. You can't. You know, come on. Read about Socrates on, on Wikipedia. You can become such an annoying asshole with Wikipedia, right? Because you can look up the Socratic method and think, oh, well, good. I'm a lecturer. It's great. <laughs> come on. Which part of the exception system is in the VM? So, um, Let's have a look at, uh, at something um, in the exception system, Did right? You already said this yesterday. It's already yeah, fetching the handler. It maybe it's it's not actually part of the ex exception system, but I think I think of it as part of the exception system. So what has to happen in an execution system for this to work? Yeah. 
for an insure block to work. So if I want to ensure that that block is always executed, then when the VM does a non-local return and tries to return past insure blocks, the system has to abort that return and run those insure blocks. And that's called, in Lisp terms, that's called unwind protect, right? Does that does that make any does that ring any bells? Unwind protect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the only thing that needs to be in the in 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 the VM for this exception system is unwind protect. That was the only thing that was added over the small talk eighty VM when exceptions were added. In, in, in that you could catch the cannot return. You, you do it by catch cannot return, or how, how, how do you, I mean this. Right, that you would implement return. You would implement return by actually, actually, indeed, indeed. Yes. Yep, yep, but that, but that would work, indeed. So, um, so these contexts, this 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 method of implementing the system gives you uh, uh, very very general uh, uh, control structures, very very rich um, uh, facilities. You can um, uh, do distributed uh, computation where you ship a process from one system to another because you can completely reify. The computation, right? I mean, the, the computation exists as objects. You can uh, you can serialize it if you want to, and you can serialize it across a wire. Contexts are fundamental to the implementation of, of Seaside because they're how they do delimited continuations, right? So you know you know what's going on in Seaside is when you go from one web page to another, you're remembering what's the continuation in that web page, right? And you're going to a new one. Right, and what's the continuation of that in that web page? And you do that just by storing these 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 contexts. Right, you you walk you walk some amount of the stack until you get down to a delimited point. Right, because you don't want to copy all of it. Basically, when you when you enter in, I, I I don't know the details, but somewhere where you enter into Seaside, right, and you and you copy those those contexts, and then and then when you when you go back to your page, you reinstate those contexts. Right. So, you know, um, we can justify the, the computational cost of this because it's a wonderful general facility, right? We can build exceptions above the line. We can build seaside. We can freeze um, freeze processes uh, uh, for later use. We can implement the debugger and the execution simulation machinery, etc., etc., etc. But these things are a disaster. They're a complete disaster for performance. Every time you send a message, you have to allocate an object. So the garbage collector also effectively has to reclaim every time you do a return. So you've got this huge allocation rate. And then these things have disjoint stacks. So what happens in C when you make a, 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 a procedure call right, is that you push arguments onto a stack, and then you make a call instruction, which, which pushes a return PC. right? And then you save the, the stack pointer to get a frame pointer, and then and then and then you continue. So your arguments are incoming. Your arguments are there because stacks grow down. Your arguments are positive offsets from the from the frame pointer, and your local variables are negative offsets, right? But what happens with context is you actually have to create a new context and copy, right? actually move the arguments that you pushed on on the stack of the sender context. To become the local, the arguments of this new context, right? So um, contexts in the 
in a classical Smalltalk VM, in a, in, a, in a Blue Book VM, are very, very costly. It's an object allocation every time you send a message. It's an object reclamation every time you return. And you have to copy the arguments from the, the caller to the, the callee. So uh, don't do it. These guys. So, um, the the right way to think of this is that this is a contiguous piece of memory where the first six fields are named instance variables, and the remaining fields are indexed by the by the stack pointer. So when you do at on this thing, you add to the index the number of named instance variables. So if you say at one you add six to the start of the object because it's got six named instance variables and you access this one. So it's actually the seventh slot in it, okay. right? And it used to be um, that object, uh, that ordered collection was like this. The ordered collection had a first index and a last index and some number of, of fields, right? So there, you know, the VM would add two. And, and uh, you, know, you can still do this, but we, but we, don't, we don't do this now. We like, we like using a separate array, right? But it's still kept for, for, for uh, contexts. So what's happening here is in the byte code, there are um, three byte codes, push uh, temporary variable, store pop temporary variable, and store temporary variable, which all take an index, which is from 1 to n, right? And push you know, indexes the nth temporary, and then increases the stack pointer and copies that value to the top of the stack and store pop takes the top thing off the stack stores it in the temporary that you asked it to and decrements the the stack pointer and store just doesn't do the the decrement of the stack stack pointer so mm -hmm. Well, they're just the same thing, and they just present exactly the same information in different ways. This is a horrible gobbledygook that is all internals, and this is source. But if I have a look at, um, uh, let's have a look at the, f the second argument, a context. Now, let's look at the first one. Here, a read-write st stream is the, uh, uh, so, sorry, text or stream, right, is the first uh, variable and it's the first argument and here it is it's a read write stream it's the same it's the same value right and if I look at the uh, the, the um, let's look at if fail fail block it's a closure and it's the 0 1 2 3 4 0 1 2 3 4 it's a closure right so the um, and then when we start to get onto stuff like the method, well, okay, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what's the seventh item here? It is a method. So it, 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 it's, it's, even, it's even cheesier than that. It should be that, but it's actually a bit that says, give me 12 or give me uh, 48, whatever it is. And it used to make sense. It used to, if you read the blue book carefully, you'll find that the, um, the choice of the difference between what's called a small context, which has 12 named, uh, 12 indexed slots plus the six, uh, plus the class, plus the size field, right? So it's, it's 8 plus 12 is 20, right? Is exactly half the size of a large context. So a large context was size uh, 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 32 plus, right? And so you could split a large one into a small one. And that was why it was done, 
because in, in, in the garbage collector it made, it made sense. And, and now, you know, that's an anachronism. Those parameters inside a, a collection instance is the same as not as having it all together in compiled method, is not paying, not paying the cost of accessing another object or, or eventually they just there's just too much fluff in your navel. And you can't, you know, you keep on gazing into your navel and it you know there's it, it, eventually you, you you need to ground it and, and actually get some work done. And not worry about the elegance and, and the beautifulness. This had to run on a real machine that was built in, you know, 1972, 1974, right? And um, by by flattening it, um, you could actually get some useful work done, right? And get something that 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 that, that ran. If you if you if you make it more and more uh, abstruse, more and more broken down into separate parts, it goes slower and slower and slower. And you pay for those abstractions. Right. I mean, uh, but th th that that flattening flattening the literals and the byte codes into one object uh, was really to do with having a 16-bit machine and very limited addresses. Right. So um, one of the interesting things that happened with Smalltalk 80 was there were it was a 16-bit machine. It had 15-bit small integers, so 32,000 from minus 32,000 to uh, minus 16,000 to plus 16,000 was your small integer range. And then you had um, uh, up to uh, 32K objects. And that was what all the original work was done until they started hitting the boundary that they wanted a bigger class library. And they actually reduced the small integer range from to minus 8,000 to plus 8,000. And then they had uh, 32K plus 16K, whatever that is, uh, objects, right, to, 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 to stretch it. And now we have 32 bits. We, we don't have to worry. Okay, that's it, it's not an issue anymore. So okay, um, so that's what that's what contexts are and 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 byte coded methods and the whole the whole point is is that um, these things being small talk objects, we can now program uh, uh, control structures, not not just at the level of 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 being able to define. Um, you know, do and, and 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 iterators in the in the collection hierarchy and 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 and, and if true and so, but actually fundamental control mechanisms like exception handling, coroutining, right? Not not just syntactic sugar for for lambda application, but but novel control structures like backtracking, etc. There's a great paper um, uh, by uh, Mark uh, Van Gulik called uh, "Adding Backtracking to Smalltalk 80." Uh, without uh, without kernel modification, which is essentially about um, giving you um, uh, you know prolog style backtracking, and and that's something that you do by um, copying effectively uh, an unwind protect block in the in, in in the stack. Well, copying some something in the stack and moving it around so that you can always say, okay, where where if I want to if I want to, to backtrack, where where would I backtrack to and, and continue from? And that's a that's a that's a fun paper that you should look up. So these guys are useful but they're horribly expensive. And the reason why they're horribly expensive is because they're they're objects um, and, and they don't have a, a, a contiguous um, a contiguous stack. So if I show you um, in the standard interpreter what uh, activating a method looks like. I wish I could go to full screen. I don't know why this is this is sort of working. Let's go to full screen. Full screen on. Full screen on. Okay. Now we're cooking with glass, gas. Okay. So um, activate new method. No, that's yes, that's right. Okay. So um, where does activate method get sent from? Um, it gets sent from. Uh, uh, we keep on doing this one, All right? So, uh, 
Oh yeah, this internal. Never, never mind. But okay. So um, if we were doing perform, then once we've looked up the message that we're performing, we need to execute this method. And executing a method isn't necessarily activating the method because the method might have a primitive. So executing a method means if it's got a primitive, you just do the primitive, and if the primitive works, you're done. You get the result and you return, right? But if you, um, uh, if you do the primitive and it fails, you need to activate the method. So there's this, this distinction between executing and, and activating. And activating means you're going to have to allocate a new context. Uh, so what do we do? So first thing we have to do is find from the, the, the variable that the uh, interpreter maintains the, the method to activate in new method. Uh, we get its its first word, and if if I you know if I inspect this method, the first word of a compiled method is a small integer, and that's basically uh, just a series of bit fields that encodes things like what's a primitive index, how many arguments have I got, how many temporaries have I got, how many literals, and am I a a, a big or a small frame? Right. So just a whole whole series of uh, of, of, of bit fields that, that define stuff. And one of the bits is whether we use, whether we need a big stack frame or a small stack frame. So uh, grab the header and then um, let's either allocate a uh, big or a small uh, context. So this is some real half assed attempt at coping with the fact that contexts are expensive. It's basically just a linked list of, uh, of, of contexts that we've, we've previously used. And it's a really weak optimization. Right? It just makes it quick to allocate contexts. It doesn't avoid allocating contexts. Okay? Just make, makes you know, doing something <laughs> stupid slightly quicker. So then, uh, then you have to find out where do we start executing. So the point where you start executing in, in, in the method is you need to know the number of literals in the method, and then the bytecode comes after the number of literals. Uh, and then we need to know how many uh, temporaries. We know how many arguments we've got that's in the bytecode, and then we've got to allocate some number of temporaries. We've got to, to increase the stack for, for the number of temporaries and, and fill in those entries with, with, uh, with nil. Instru yeah, initial IP, yeah, initial instruction pointer. Sometimes it's called PC, sometimes it's called IP. Um, and so um, what happens here is we allocate this new context and we set the first field to the current active context. So that's filling in the sender field. Right, with, so that the, that the interpreter holds on to the active context. That's the variable it uses. That's its current stack frame. So we're making a new one. So the first thing we do is fill in the sender field with the, uh, with the existing one. And then we fill in the instruction pointer with the initial IP. And then we fill in the stack pointer with the uh, temporary count. right? And the temporary count is the number of arguments plus the number of temporaries. And then we fill in the method. And then because this is not a block activation, we put nil in the closure index. Right? And then we copy the arguments. So here, from zero to argument count, we copy the arguments from the old context to the new context, which is something that you don't have to do in C, because you've got this incoming arguments overlapping. right? Um, and then here's the, here's the initialization of all of the temporaries. And then this is where we remove the arguments from the old context by cutting back the stack. And then we just uh, swap the contexts. There was a question why we need to copy arguments. Because... Yes, elaborate why right. we need to capture. So... Uh, you, you saw when we looked at a context that the arguments need to be, uh, that, 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 that a context has its own local stack. So it, 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 
all, all, all of that dynamic state has to be accessible locally to the context. So you've got you've got to. I mean, you could you could do something horribly slow and 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 indirect through the sender to try and 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 get to your arguments, right? And 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 and, but you can imagine the amount of you'd have to fetch the stack pointer and 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 subtract and things, and it's just a complete mess. Much easier to just copy things, copy the arguments in. That's debatable, right? Because if you held on to your to your sender, it wouldn't go. But I, I think I think that's a fair point. I agree with you. But you, you know, what 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 if you had the sender stack being an array, right? And you held on to it. I mean, I think that there are so many different ways to to bake the cookie. I mean, you 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 could you could implement it in some really bizarre ways if you wanted to. You know, and you see things like PHP, and people have done it. Um, I don't know about that. Then they're not they're not shared. If, if they were, yeah. Doesn't this mean that uh, it would change the semantics of passing the basic values? You you it would be passed by reference. Right. If, <laughs> yes. So if if uh, besides uh, optimal. Oh. Yeah, provide, providing that there's a way of of, uh, of 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 altering those things. I mean, if, if if in some way that you made the sender context immutable until you returned to it, then you could say that it it it, it didn't. Right? You'd actually have to provide a mechanism and use that mechanism. Right? And I, th I think you know you're you're right. I'm not I'm not saying you're you're, you're wrong. Right? But it's not necessarily the case that, that implementing it like that would give you call by call by name or call by reference, right? Yeah. 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 All, all of this uh, runs um, in, uh, so more, 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 uh, it's going to be interrupt, interrupted by another uh, execution from another method. I mean, that's that, that, that's right. This is this is this is atomic, effectively, atomic, right? It, it is it is indeed an atomic process, and the um, the, the the point at which um, this can be interrupted is um, in the interpreter. I believe it's when you invoke a primitive and when you do a backward branch. I think that that's that that's the point where it's asking, uh, should we break out of, of of execution? But let let let's not let's not go there. You can. Say again, Mariana. There's no problem then with the active context. Right. Because I thought of maybe you are stuck, I can solve it with another method, is executed, and it overrides. No, no, so I mean, right, right. I mean, we, we, just just have a look at, at, at like IO, IO poll for events or something and see where, the, where that's sent in the, uh, in the interpreter, and you'll, you'll answer that question. So, OK. How do we? Um, okay, so hold hold that hold that in uh, in your in your in your mind, right? That that these contexts um, very convenient up at the image level, but very very slow down in the in the virtual machine. That that, that that's one thing that we have to hold in our minds. Another thing we want to hold in in, in our minds is what's going on when we look up a, a method. So let me um, walk you through um, a send byte code. So here's um, a standard implementation of, of a byte code, which says, um, OK, um, the selector to use is the literal uh, defined by the lowest nibble of the current bytecode. And these are the last um, 
16 plus 16 plus 16 bytecodes in the, in the bytecoded set. And the argument count is either 0, 1, or 2. So the last 16 uh, bytecodes are sends of, uh, of a two argument selector. The 16 before them are sends of a one argument selector, and the 16 before them are, are, are sends of a, of a zero argument selector. So this part of the decode finds the selector and the argument count, and then we uh, go to normal send. And what that does is find the receiver. Um, ignore this. This is another kind of bizarre, complicating uh, optimization that we don't need to go into. But just it, it, it's very, it, it's, it's Right, it's just reading the, the, the stack at sum offset and, and, and it's, it's grabbing it from a context object and it's coming up with the receiver. And then we're uh, fetching the, the, the class of the receiver. So how do we fetch the class? We have got um, in this system uh, two kinds of objects. We have um, what people typically call immediates and uh, non-immediates. So non-immediates are traditional objects where um, what the uh, locations in the program are holding onto is a, is a pointer to some state on the heap. But um, that makes it very, very expensive, uh, obviously, to, uh, to, to allocate compared to, say, arithmetic in a conventional language. And a, a standard optimization is to um, represent the integers, a, a range of the integers, using a tag in the pointer. So if the least significant bit of the pointer is, is 1, then uh, that pointer is not uh, a pointer. That pointer is an integer. So in, uh, in this system, uh, if the... Um, <coughs> If the least significant bit of a pointer is one, that's actually a, 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 an object which is embedded in the, in, in the pointer, and it's a, a small integer. So um, hence, in, in squeak, we can have from 2 to the minus 30 to 2 to the plus 30 are our integer range, right? And the way that that's that, you know, it, this is uh, obviously very cheap to, to, to synthesize. If, if, I've got, if I've got some, some uh, two small integers and I want to, to add them together, providing that the result fits in 31 bits, I can create that object just by uh, taking the value and shifting it and oring in one. I don't have to allocate anything on the heap. I, I, just, I just create a bit pattern. So um, small integers uh, speed up integer arithmetic. Uh, in in uh, well, this this thing of of of, of, of tagged integers speeds up uh, integer arithmetic in many many dynamic language implementations, not not just not just small talk. But it's got a, a cost associated with it, which is when we um, find out what the class of an object is, we have to do all of this uh, testing. So one of the tests we need to do when we fetch the class of a of a small talk object is is this least significant bit set. And if the least significant bit set is set, then the class is, uh, it's actually, um, there is an object in the VM which the, uh, which the system, the VM uses to, to, to grab everything from. And so if I look at what class integer is, it's five. And if I look at the sixth element, because this is the VM is zero relative and the image is one relative, there is class small integer in the in the special objects array, right? And if I look at four, that's actually where the VM gets hold of the current uh, of, of the scheduler and finds out where the where the active process is and stuff. And one is nil, and two is false, and three is true, et cetera. Right? That's not the global no, that's the objects that the VM needs to, to know. Right? 
And so that's totally different from the Smalltalk dictionary, which is all the, all the globals. So this is just the set of, uh, uh, of objects that the VM needs to know. So one of, one of the things that it needs is, for example, the does not understand selector, if it, if it, if it ever does, uh, does not understand. And so um, uh, Right, so that's that's going to be twenty in the in the VM. Right. So the, uh, the 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 places where um, the VM can access objects are the instance variables of the receiver, literals of the method, and the special objects array. So um, to fetch the class of an object, do the tag test, and if uh, if the tag is set, then uh, we fetch small integer from the special objects array. And then we've got this cool idea, uh, which is just horrible, again. Um, to try and keep uh, objects small, let's have many different kinds of, of, of header. So we've got three different kinds of object header. We've got one word headers, two word headers, three word headers, one word headers. Uh, objects have to be uh, of, a, of a limited size, and they have to be one of 32 classes. So um, uh, again, uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, you've you've done that. No. All right. So this was good because this meant that when Squeak went to 32 bits, the image didn't grow as much as it, it, it would have. But there's a better idea, which I'll describe, um, which I did for 64-bit uh, visual works and which I want to do for, for, for Squeak, which is um, uh, make every object, every non-immediate object have a, a bit field in it, which is the, uh, the, 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 the class index. So instead of burning a full 32 bits on a class reference, you burn maybe 20 bits on a class reference. And then you can manage to have every object having a two-word header, where we, we have uh, room for a nice big identity hash and a class and then, and then size. But I, I'll go into that tomorrow. I don't want to go into that. Now, we've got to do some other things first. So OK, this idea of having an array in the special objects, which can hold up, in this case, up to 32 classes, means that, that um, a number of, of objects in the system uh, uh, can, we can have one word headers for. But we have to pay for it in the, um, the, the class fetch. So. Um, we, uh, if we want to determine the class of an object, uh, grab the, the bit field which could encode for the compact classes. And if that's zero, then um, we grab the word in the header which is uh, a reference to the class. Otherwise, um, if that's non-zero, then we have to fetch that array of compact classes from the special objects array and index it. So fetching the class is, is, is clunky and slow. Uh, and it's a time-space trade-off. Uh, so going back to our, our send, that's what's happening when we fetch the class. And then we can actually uh, uh, do a lookup. Now, why, why is this factored as it is? It's factored as it is because there are super sends. And in super sends, the class is, 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 that we should do the lookup in is defined by the, by the method, right? Because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're doing a super send in a particular method. You're saying, I want you to start looking up above this method, above the class of the method. Right? So the, 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 the sending machinery is, is factored in this way so that common code is common to both super and non-super sends. So um, that brings us to common send. And... Um, 
that's broken into find the method, uh, execute it. So finding the method, um, the first really important optimization uh, uh, for, for message lookup in, in Smalltalk implementations was to have a, a cache to remember the, uh, uh, the previous uh, N lookups. So um, this is just uh, a set of, 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 of quads of a selector, a class, a target method, and a primitive. And what we do is um, form a, 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 a hash function just by uh, XORing the selector's address with the class's address. And then having a look in this method cache and saying, OK, uh, if at that probe the selector matches and the class matches, then the method and the primitive function can be, can be found. That's right. That's right. And 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 in fact, it it it, it wipes the thing as soon uh, as soon as it does a garbage collection. Right. And that, that's another advantage of of um, the. Well, I don't have to go there. Um, so, um, so this again is 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 very very slow. And um, there was a conversation at Xerox Park in around um, late 70s, uh, 1980, in which Butler Lampson, who is uh, a very famous uh, Park alumni, um, who was the unit of intelligence at Xerox Park. So, you know, being a very, very geeky place, units were, were really important. Um, and uh, people would try and come up with, with names for uh, important quantities. And so the Lampson was the unit of intelligence. And so people were described in how many Lampsons they were, Pico Lampsons, Micro Lampsons, because there was only one Lampson. Um, when I was at Park Place, we also discussed the quantum of intelligence, which is the smallest possible amount of intelligence. And that was the CEO of Park Place. <laughs> the lion. Um, you're not going to put this on the internet, right? You <laughs> cannot put this on. My, I, I'm, I'm dead if you do. So um, so Butler Lamson said to uh, uh, Peter Deutsch, who'd, who'd uh, done a very fast uh, microcoded implementation, why, why do you go to all of this effort? It almost never uh, is worth it. Almost all of the messages that you send are to one class. You, 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 you know what's going to happen. The amount of, of polymorphism going on in this system is, 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 is tiny. And he's actually wrong. I think it's about 10% uh, of executed sends are, are polymorphic in, 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 in small talk, which is not small. And he estimated that, that, it, was, that it was smaller than that. But uh, Peter realized, uh, yes, most of the time, uh, at a particular send site in the program, there is no polymorphism. The same thing is happening every time you execute it. So how can I exploit that in uh, execution terms? And the idea for um, converting the bytecode to machine code and implementing um, ascend as a call instruction, because that's the natural thing that it maps to in terms of, of procedural languages, came, came to him. And so um, that's the inline cache, and um, I want to sh show you that. We should go to lunch, and, and, and I'll come back to that. Right, all right. <laughs>